Defining a clear set of business requirements is one of the most important activities in a digital transformation or any sort of technology initiative. But what exactly are business requirements and how do we use them? That's what I want to talk about here today. My name is Eric Kimberling. I'm the CEO of Third Stage Consulting. We're an independent consulting firm that helps clients throughout the world reach their third stage of digital transformation success. And when organizations are going through any sort of enterprise-wide digital transformation, whether it be an ERP implementation or CRM or HR, supply chain management, whatever the technology initiative might be, it's very important that you have a set of clear business requirements to help guide the selection and implementation process. So what I want to do today is talk about what business requirements are, how they're used throughout the digital transformation journey, and how you can deploy a useful set of business requirements in your digital transformation or ERP implementation project. And before I dive into this here today, I also want to encourage you to download our ebook called Lessons from 1000 Digital Transformations. And this ebook captures best practices and lessons learned and tips for how to make your digital transformation or ERP implementation more successful and you can download that via the links I've included below. First, it helps to understand what exactly business requirements are. And as the name suggests, it's a set of descriptions of what you need technology to do to support your business. So typically what happens is organizations decide that they need a new technology or set of technologies, or they want to deploy a set of technologies to improve their business. As part of their process, one of the first steps is to define what those business requirements or business needs are. You can also view them or consider them in terms of what the business wants are. In a perfect world, if we could improve our business with new technologies, what kind of requirements might we have in that scenario? So business requirements are really a combination of the things that are working today that you want to preserve, but also looking to the future of in a perfect world with new technologies, what kind of business needs and requirements is it that we want to have. Now these business requirements are useful through the entire life cycle of any sort of ERP implementation or digital transformation. Business requirements are a useful tool for helping evaluate and select the right technology, but they're also a useful tool in terms of helping implement the technology the way you need it implemented. And that latter part is really important because a lot of organizations focus on business requirements to help pick the technologies or to select the technologies but then they lose sight of those business requirements and they don't do much with it during implementation. So what I'll talk about throughout this video is how business requirements can be defined and how they can be used effectively in your digital transformation or ERP implementation. So the way business requirements gathering typically works is you'll have a series of workshops with different stakeholders and functional areas within your organization. You'll ask them to describe their current processes, to walk through their current processes, to talk through the things that are working well and the things that aren't working well. What are the pain points and the opportunities for improvement? And then another layer is also looking to the future. In a perfect world, if we had better technology, what might that look like and what might those business needs or requirements be? So we're looking at business requirements across the spectrum of what works today all the way through what could work or be possible in the future. And typically what we're doing is we're describing in a fair amount of detail, what we would like the technology to do. Within our functional area, what is it that we would like the technology to do to support our business going forward? Now, one word of warning here and one tip is to make sure that you're not simply rehashing what you already do today and focusing just on the current state. The current state is important. There's probably things that you're doing well that you want to preserve and build on, but you don't want to simply automate what you've always done. You want to look to the future to define what technology could help with and also look to the ways that technology could potentially improve some of the pain points and opportunities for improvement within your organization. Now, once we've defined these business requirements through these workshops, we might end up with hundreds of business requirements. If you're a larger, more complex organization, you might end up with thousands. So it really depends on the size and complexity and depth that you'd like to go into. One thing I would say is that the deeper you go into the requirements, the more likely it is that you might run into analysis paralysis, but at the same time, you don't want to be so high level that they're not helpful in helping you select and implement software effectively. So you want to find that right balance to help you manage the project in using those business requirements as a foundation for the entire digital transformation journey. Now, once we have our full set of requirements, 
not all business requirements are created equally. Some of them are extremely important and extremely critical. They're must-haves, they're showstoppers if we can't get these business requirements, or they're very strategic to the organization. There might be another set of business requirements that are low priorities. It's just more nice to have. In a perfect world, yes, we would like these things to be accomplished. And then there's some that are sort of moderate prioritizations that are a little bit more important than nice to haves, but they're not super critical or absolutely critical to the organization. So typically you want to prioritize your business requirements in terms of high, medium, and low, or critical, nice to have, somewhere in between, whatever categorization you want to call it. Typically having those three layers of business requirements is critical, and that prioritization will help make sure that you recognize and navigate the inevitable trade-offs that happen when you're selecting and deploying technology. In other words, you're not going to find and deploy technology that meets all of your business requirements, so that helps you ensure that you're at least meeting the most important ones and maybe most of the moderate ones and maybe a fair amount of the low priority requirements. So that prioritization is just as important as the actual definition of the business requirements as well. Now once we have our business requirements defined and we've prioritized them, now we can use those business requirements to help us identify, evaluate, and select potential technologies to help us with our business. So now we can look at demos from software vendors and we can do it not just in the context of a sales pitch from a sales rep, but instead we can do it in the context against the backdrop of what our business needs and requirements are. And the great thing about this is it allows you as a potential customer to really drive the demo and the sales process with the sales vendors rather than the other way around. It allows you to ensure that you're looking at and evaluating technology through the lens of your business requirements, not necessarily just the cool bells and whistles that the technology vendors can provide. Now having said that, during the demo process while you're evaluating potential technologies, you may find that you add to your list of business requirements because you see something you really like in the technology you're seeing and that might inform or help you shape some of your business requirements. But in general, you should have 80 or 90% of your evaluation requirements already defined early on. Now, one word of warning and a potential pitfall that you want to avoid if you can, is that a lot of times organizations, when they have hundreds or thousands of different business requirements, they get caught up in analysis paralysis. They get concerned that they can't find a technology that meets every single one of those business requirements well. And that's to be expected. You're not going to find technology that can meet every single one of your business requirements well, unless you go out there and buy a bunch of point solutions that can handle every single nook and cranny within your organization. But the key here is we're using these requirements to compare different options. And we want to pick the best option, not the perfect option, but the best one. And those business requirements through the prioritization and the waiting process that I described earlier will help you do that. Another area that business requirements help with during a digital transformation or ERP implementation is in the software and process design aspect of the transformation. In other words, those business requirements now not only help you select the right technology, but now those same business requirements should help you implement the technology and design the technology the way you need to. And this is a great project governance tool. It's a way to keep the project on track and to keep the project focused on the business requirements and the business needs that you know you want to accomplish with this digital transformation. Now, one thing to note here is sometimes organizations will do a high level set of business requirements during the evaluation process, but when they get into the design and implementation phase of the project, they'll go deeper and they'll define those business requirements in more detail. Some organizations will do those detailed requirements up front during the evaluation, in which case those same requirements can then be used to design and implement the technology. But regardless of when you do that and when you get into that additional layer of detail, you want to make sure you have those detailed business requirements defined before you start designing business processes and new technologies. If you don't have those business requirements in place and clearly articulated and documented, what ends up happening is your software vendor and your implementation partner will more than likely sort of guess as to what they think you need and they'll build the software the way they're comfortable with or with what they know, not necessarily in the context of what's best for your business. So business requirements are a great project governance tool and they're also a great way to give organizations control and ownership of their own implementations so that they're not being hijacked by the software vendor and the implementation partner. And finally, it's important to note that business requirements are not 
just useful for helping design detailed workflows within technology, but just as importantly, maybe even more importantly, those business requirements should help you design your future state business processes and workflows. That may sound like the same thing, but they're not. You've got your high level business processes and workflows, and then you've got your more detailed granular transactional workflows within the technology. And so rather than just building the technology from the bottom up, the business requirements that you've defined should help you define the business processes from the strategic level at the macro level all the way on down to that transactional level of detail. So business requirements are a great tool for helping you design not just new technologies, but also new business processes as well. Now finally, requirements traceability is something that is often overlooked by implementation teams. I mentioned earlier in this video that organizations oftentimes will define business requirements and evaluate and select technology with those business requirements, but they too often ignore those business requirements as the implementation goes on. And this is a big mistake because if you lose sight of what it is you're trying to deploy and what it is you're trying to get out of your technology, chances are you're not gonna realize the ROI that you expect from your investment and your cost is more likely to spiral out of control because you don't have that governance mechanism in place via your prioritized business requirements that help guide you and provide that sort of North Star to your overall implementation. So as you go from design to test to training to go live preparation, you wanna make sure all along the way you have those requirements in the back of your mind and you're looking at traceability of those business requirements so that you can not guarantee necessarily that you're going to achieve 100% of your business requirements, but instead that you can make an educated and informed decision and understanding of what requirements you have achieved and which ones you haven't. And then when it comes time to go live and you have that go, no go decision, you can go back to those business requirements and say, what percentage of our business requirements have we accomplished and tested and validated within the new technology and which ones haven't we? And can we live with those risks and those trade-offs? What often ends up happening is the high priority requirements, you expect that you have a very high percentage of compliance with those high level requirements or high priority requirements. With the lower level requirements or the lower priority requirements, it might be that you're not as concerned with achieving or validating all of them. And then the mid or the moderate ones might be somewhere in between. So the business requirements are a great way to ensure that you have that traceability throughout the entire cycle from evaluation and selection all the way through implementation and go live as well. So I hope this has provided you some guidance on not only what business requirements are, but more importantly, how those business requirements can be used to make a more successful digital transformation in the ERP project. For more guidance and best practices, I encourage you to download our ebook called Lessons from 1000 Digital Transformations. And in this ebook, we provide a number of best practices, lessons learned, and tips to make your digital transformation or ERP project more successful. So I encourage you to download that ebook in the links below, along with other resources that I've included that I think will be helpful for you as well. So I hope you found this information useful and hope you have a great day.